I do want to jump into the NFL draft discussion and chatter real quick because there is a good amount of stuff to talk about here. And I'm not going to dive into every single pick of it because that's going to take a whole episode in of itself. I just want to talk about the top five. Then I just want to talk about a few other notable picks here in the draft. And this is only 1.0, my mock draft 1.0. 2.0 should be coming out uh, Wednesday or Thursday, I believe, next week. Uh, stay tuned for that. Obviously, I will discuss that and break that down as well. But let's just discuss uh, what I have here. So first pick, first overall, I have the Jaguars taken. Icky Ikonwu, the offensive tackle from North Carolina State. Number two, I have the Detroit Lions taken Aiden Hutchinson, defensive end from Michigan. I have the Texans at three taken Kyle Hamilton, the very good versatile safety from Notre Dame. And then a questionable pick here that I probably see being moved is the Jets taking Sauce Gardner at four, the cornerback from Cincinnati. I know a lot of people in the league are high on him, and the Jets might kind of splurge and take that pick, uh, take that player at that pick, even though they shouldn't. But they do need a cornerback. He is the best cornerback uh, exiting college football right now that is in the draft pool. But at four, though, I mean, Denzel Ward at four, I think, was the last cornerback to go in the top five. I don't know if he's a questionable pick at four, but he's turned out to be one of the best cornerbacks in the league. Top 10, top eight cornerback in this league. Could it be worth it? Possibly. But I feel like there's other needs that would have bigger impact, whether it's a an edge rusher or whether it's a, uh, a D lineman there at four. But, you know, taking a cornerback, a, a big team need at four definitely makes a lot of sense because they also need a wide receiver. And I actually have them taking Drake London at 10, but I don't think a wide receiver should go in the top five. So, and the last pick of the top five is the New York Giants taking Evan Neal, the offensive tackle from Alabama. For a long time in early stages of my mock draft, I have Evan Neal going to Jacksonville at number one, and then Ikon will go into the Giants at five. I switched them because I've noticed that Evan Neal is kind of dropping a little bit and Ikonwu has gone up in a lot of mocks. And I know a lot of other mock drafts that are out there have Hutchinson going to the Jaguars and Ikonwu going to maybe the Texans or even the Giants at 5. So definitely stay tuned for 2.0 because I definitely foresee a lot of adjustments being made between 1.0 and 2.0. But let's just stay focused here on 1.0. So that's the top 5. Ikonwu to the Jags. Hutchinson to the Lions, Kyle Hamilton to the Texans, Sauce Gardner to the Jets at four, and Evan Neal to the Giants at five. Now, I'll probably talk about five other picks or so here in the first round, and ironically, the next one I want to talk about is the Carolina Panthers. I said that so weird, didn't I? I was like, Carolina. Carolina Panthers at six. I have them taking Malik Willis, the quarterback from Liberty, probably the most highly I don't want to say highly touted quarterback prospect. I'm high on him. I think he's the most complete. I know a lot of people probably have Kenny Pickett over him. People are saying Desmond Ritter is the most NFL ready quarterback, which I agree with. He's like the Mac Jones of this year's draft. I don't think a quarterback should be taken before the teens. I don't. So one through 12, I don't think a quarterback should be taken. Ironically, I don't like any of these quarterbacks in the first round, to be honest, but Carolina Panthers, they need a quarterback. They're saying they're a quarterback away from being you know, a competitor in the NFC South, which may be true. And that's why I had them jumping the gun and taking Malik Willis here at six. Now, if I was the Panthers, I would see that, okay, the Giants probably not drafting a quarterback at seven. The Falcons could at eight. They just signed Marcus Mariota, but they also have other needs such as wide receiver maybe that you know I have them taking one at eight. You have the Seahawks who could need a quarterback at nine. The Commanders at eleven maybe, but like you know now we're starting to like you know really stretch it. So could you see the Panthers trading back from six to maybe like a 10, 11, or a twelve, getting another first round pick and some other assets for this year's maybe next year's draft, and then taking the quarterback at 10, 11, 12, wherever they move back to. I think that's the more strategic and the smarter avenue for these Panthers to travel down. Because again, I don't think a quarterback should be taken in the top 12 picks. 
But Panthers' blaring need is clearly a quarterback. And I, I see them taking their biggest need at six, and that's a quarterback. Because if they do trade back, they could you know find themselves losing out on Malik Willis or Kenny Pickett to the Atlanta Falcons or the Seattle Seahawks. Maybe even the Washington Commanders kind of jump up and take a quarterback for the future because maybe Carson Wentz won't be their guy long term. And there's going to be a great pool of quarterbacks coming out in next year's draft, which a team like the Falcons or the Seahawks or even the Commanders could be waiting for. So there's a lot of question marks revolving around the Panthers here at six. And I really think it bears a lot of interesting discussion. Do you stay pat at six? Just take the quarterback and be done with it? Do you take the chance? trade back, bring in some more assets to either either move around the board in day one, two, or three, get another first-round pick for next year, but you're going to risk the Falcons, Seahawks, or even the Commanders taking your guy at 8, 9, or 11. If you like both Malik Willis and Kenny Pickett, and you can live with either one of them, then maybe trading back is not a bad idea because I don't see Kenny Pickett and Malik Willis going in the top 12. I just don't see it happening. Again, I don't think a quarterback should be taken in the top 12. I don't think a quarterback should be taken in the first round. That's just me, honestly. So with the big trade between the Eagles and the Saints, a lot of maneuvering has happened here, the lid to uh, mid to late teens. And it actually really messed up my mock draft originally because I did have it all done. And then that trade gets announced at the beginning of the week, whenever it was. So I don't want to talk about the picks, but the middle of the draft is controlled by the Eagles and the Saints. If any team wants to move up, they have to go through the Eagles or the Saints, especially if you're like a a Green Bay or a Kansas City who both have two first round picks. They could package those up to move up ahead of the Patriots or ahead of the Packers if you're the Chiefs or ahead of the Steelers. So the Eagles have 15, the Saints have 16, Eagles have 18, Saints have 19, and the Chargers are in the middle at 17. And I think New Orleans Saints moved up to 16 to be able to draft Trevor Penning, the offensive tackle from Northern Iowa, because the Chargers have a blaring need on the offensive line, specifically a tackle, at um, themselves to protect Justin Herbert. And the New Orleans Saints trading up to 16, I believe they'll draft Trevor Penning, to protect their quarterback of the future. This year it will be Jameis Winston. Maybe it will be Ian Book at some point this year if he gets another chance at it. Maybe the Saints will look for their future quarterback in next year's draft. Maybe they'll take those two draft picks that they have and try to trade up even further in the draft. Maybe they'll try to package those two up and trade up at six with the Carolina Panthers. Or maybe they'll try to trade for one of those Jets picks at 10. I don't think they'll be able to trade all the way up to four. But maybe packaging up 16 and 19 will get you to 10. Or maybe it will get the Giants to move down from 7 and it'll get you there. And even if the Saints did trade up for Trevor Penning like I have predicted in my mock draft at 16, I still have the Chargers taking uh, Bernard Raymond, the offensive tackle from Central Michigan, at 17 either way. I do at the moment feel like the Chargers are taking a offensive tackle one way or the other, regardless of what happens in front of them. I have Tyler Lindbaum at 14. I got Trevor Penning at 16, and I have Bernard Raymond at 17. So I think the Chargers will be going offensive lineman at that spot no matter what. They don't need a wide receiver. They don't need a quarterback. They don't need a running back. Tight end they're okay at. I don't think a tight end should go in the first round. I don't have one going in the first round. Defense. Sure. I mean, could they go Nicobe Dean? Sure. Could they go Devin Lloyd? Absolutely. But I think protecting Justin Herbert is a bigger need right now, especially where you do have the uh, the Raiders having Chandler Jones and Max Crosby who will be coming after your quarterback two games every year. Interesting pick here for the Patriots. I'm going to talk about the New England Patriots here at 21. I do have them taking Jamison Williams, the wide receiver out of Alabama, here at 21. I think that's the logical pick for them. I know that they probably should go defense here at that spot, but when you can get a top 10 player at 21, you take him. I just think so. You still have a need at wide receiver. Even after Devontae Parker 
trade. You still have a need at wide receiver. And Jamison Williams tore his ACL in the championship game, but there are rumors that he could come back earlier than expected, and I think he was probably projected to come around November. But there's rumors that he could come around October, so only missing four to six games and getting a top 10 player, you have to take that because you have Devontae Parker. Yes, you have Kendrick Bourne. Yes, you have Jacoby Myers. Yes. Those are three good wide receivers you have right now in your system. Okay? Jacoby Myers isn't a guarantee to be here on the team next year. Nikhil Harry isn't a guarantee to be on the team this year. Nelson Aguilar is probably going to get released at the end of this year before the end, uh, the start of next year based off of money and poor performance. Would I be surprised if the Patriots cut him uh, this year? No, but that's going to be a lot of dead money that they have to swallow. So as much as you want to get an impact player here at 21, getting Jamison Williams for the end of this year and the future is a very good idea. And I think that is something that the Patriots would be foolish to not think about or consider because next year you could have Devontae Parker a fully healthy Jamison Williams then you could have Kendrick Bourne John o. Smith hopefully he can kind of turn around Hunter Henry possibly James White maybe Jacoby Myers if you're able to extend him so that you will have a really good wide receiver core come next year only if you're able to get Jamison Williams here at 21. And if they pass on Jamison Williams, then I could see them taking a Jermaine Johnson if he's there, the edge rusher. I could see them taking a Devin Lloyd or a N'Kobe Dean if they're there at 21. And if they do pass on a wide receiver at 21, then in the second round, I would love to see them draft John Mechie, another Alabama wide receiver. But just reuniting Mac Jones with some of his Alabama weapons and friends, I think is probably the notion that the NFL will be going with moving forward. Linking Tua with Jalen Waddle, linking Justin, I'm um, not uh, Joe Burrow with Jamar Chase, linking Trevor Lawrence with Travis Etienne. I think this is kind of what the NFL may be gearing to is bringing in a favorite weapon of their franchise quarterback from college. In the last two teams that I want to talk about, I don't want to talk about specific picks or players. Here, but I want to talk about the Green Bay Packers at 22 and 28, and then also the Chiefs at 29 and 30. These two teams are both playoff caliber teams with very good to great quarterbacks, if I'm underestimating Aaron Rodgers and Patrick Mahomes. Teams that have playoff and Super Bowl aspirations for 2022 and obviously beyond. But both of these teams have first round picks, two first round picks here at the back end of the first round. Could we see these teams package these picks up to move up in the draft? I've already kind of alluded to it a little bit, but it's definitely something that we could see. Now, I think the Packers probably won't because I think they'll use those two picks to help fill out their team since they, you know, they did release a lot of guys and, you know, they have a lot of transition and rollover. So the Packers, I mean, I guess I'll just kind of mention it. I have them taking Devin Lloyd, the inside linebacker from Utah at 22 and then I have them taking Traylon Burks, the wide receiver out of Arkansas at 28. Could we see the Packers stay pat and just draft those two first round picks? Absolutely. Could we see them trade up and try to get into the teens? Sure. But what is that going to do for them? What are they going to get out of that besides obviously, you know, a higher rated pick? I just I think it'd be foolish if they did it because they have a lot more needs. Then say the Kansas City Chiefs, who again have 29 and 30. But I think if the Chiefs could package those two up and maybe get ahead of a team like the Patriots, I hate to say it, or maybe even, you know, the Saints have two picks there in the middle of the first round. You know, the Chiefs could package up 29 and 30, get up to 19 to draft maybe a wide receiver or a linebacker or or someone ahead of the Steelers, the Patriots, the, the Packers, and that'll allow the Saints to get two more picks in the first round and just really use that to help fill up their team because they have a lot of turnover and a lot of transition themselves. So there's a lot of maneuver that we could see here in the first round, especially from these teams with two first round picks, the Jets, the Giants, the Eagles, the Saints, the Packers, and the Chiefs all have multiple first round picks in 
the first round. Could we see them use them to maneuver up and down that first round? Absolutely. And that is one of the glorious things that I love about the NFL draft is you're able to trade these picks and maneuver the board. Obviously, you can do this in hockey and in basketball, but you can't do it in baseball. But I really do love a lot of movement in football because it's just you draft a player and they're going to be on your team for at least four years and you have that first round fifth option, fifth year option for first round players. Now in basketball, it's a little bit more uh, excessive because you know you could draft a player and then just trade them. And I feel like that happens more often than, oh, you want the fourth overall pick? All right, let's make a trade real quick, and you, and you can just take them. And you can just make the selection at four, where it's like, all right, I'll select the player you want, but you got to give me that in return. So I feel like that's where it differs. But here in football, once you take the player, it's yours. And, again, there's so many question marks for so many teams. Do the Jaguars protect Trevor Lawrence more, or do they try to go for an impact player like Aiden Hutchinson or a Kyle Hamilton? Will the Carolina Panthers jump early on a quarterback at six, or will they trade down to try to maybe get more assets and take you know, the player that they want in a more reasonable spot? What are the Jets going to do with four and ten? What are the Giants going to do with five and seven? Again, the Eagles, Packers, uh, Saints, and Chiefs all have multiple first-round picks. What are they going to do? And then obviously here locally, what will the Patriots do at 21? Will they take Jamison Williams or a wide receiver in general? Will they take a defensive player, maybe a linebacker or an edge rusher? Or what we've seen from Bill Belichick quite often is move down in the draft. Maybe go from 21 and maybe try to get uh, two of the, uh, those two Kansas City first-round picks. That wouldn't be a bad idea. And, you know, if I'm being honest, I, I wouldn't like it. But from a team perspective and a strategic perspective for the team's future, that actually kind of a smart idea if I'm being honest. But those are all of my mock draft 1.0 thoughts, opinions, comments, and everything for the 2022 NFL draft that we have in just about one, two, three, three weeks. I had to do the math in my head. Three weeks we have the NFL draft. And if you want to check out my entire 2022 NFL mock draft 1.0, you can go over to Instagram or Facebook at Murph's Card Town and you can check it out for yourself. But that is going to wrap it up.